Edith Mar- it's like Edith Murray who starts the book. Oh, wow. That lady was 105 and a half when this picture was taken. Wow. And so she was in two-inch wedgies. Um, she walks her little Pomeranian, and she's smart as a whip, and she was one of the women who really changed my life. Uh, her name's Edith Murray. She's Michelle in all my books. So anyhow, wow. so you take these people, uh-huh. and you look at their gut microbiome. They have the gut microbiome, the diversity of a 30-year-old individual. Wow. And if you look normally at people as they age, their gut microbiome becomes less and less diverse. You ultimately have only a few species. Mm. So it's this, number one, it's this huge diversity that makes a big difference. Number two, we now know that there are certain bugs that really make the difference. Mm. And the longevity paradox is actually teaching people how to nurture the bugs that are very interested in keeping you alive. Another way of looking at this, you're, you're basically a, a condominium mm-hmm. for these bugs, for right. bacteria. So how do we attract all these diverse good bugs? I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so we know that good bugs uh, like to eat certain foods. Okay. And... <clears throat> A lot of this was actually based on, there's this fascinating creature called the naked mole rat. And naked mole rats, make sure everybody who's listening or watching Googles naked naked mole rats. Mm -hmm. And uh, here will be my first controversial statement of the the day. (laughs) Naked mole rats have sometimes been described as a penis with buck teeth. Okay. Okay. So Google it. There you go. you'll, You'll see it. So these are probably one of the ugliest creatures in the world. They, th- naked mole rats live in the Sahara Desert, and they live in colonies very much like termites or bees. And they live in subterranean tunnels. And th- naked mole rats appear to have no end uh, mortality. In other words, naked mole rats live at least 10 to 20 times longer than any other rat. Mm. Rats live about two years. Mm -hmm. Naked mole rats have lived 20, 30 years. In fact, no one has actually known that you could actually have an end life of a naked mole rat. So they've been the darling of longevity researchers for Mm -hmm. a very long time. And in fact, uh, hilariously, uh, when I was a professor at Loma Linda, which is a blue zone, I had behind my desk this giant iridescent... Uh, naked mole rat picture from really? the San Diego Zoo, and everybody huh. goes, "What you know? What's the deal? You're a famous heart surgeon. What the deal? <laughs> do you got this naked mole rat behind your desk? I mean, it's bright pink and purple." And I've been fascinated with naked mole rats because they're the longest, <laughs> you know, living creatures. So, naked mole rats have the same diverse microbiome as 105 year old people. Really, really. And what are the, what the heck? is going on well it turns out naked mole rats unlike any other rat eats roots eats tubers and eats fungi that are growing in the subterranean area so if you think i would like you to eat some roots and tubers Mm. and mushrooms you're absolutely right because the evidence is rather striking that The bugs that like these things are what keeps the naked mole rat living so long, unlike any of its other rat cousins who eat grains. And we can be sure to be talking about that soon. So this is the only rat that eats tubers and mushrooms and roots. And they have the microbiome of 105-year-old people who are thriving. Mm. In fact, a study published last week out of Singapore showed that humans who eat two cups of mushrooms per week do not get alzheimer's disease and it's because two cups of any type of mushroom any type you want just go to the grocery store store, get some mushrooms turns out button mushrooms are second best of all mushrooms in terms of a compound that we now know is the secret of mushrooms porcini mushrooms which of course is the prized mushroom of italians is number one for these compounds now these compounds are polyphenols they're actually cousins of polyphenols that are in green tea. And what happens with these compounds is that they're actually eaten 
by bacteria. Bacteria love to eat polyphenols. And the bacteria then, for lack of a better word, poop out these compounds that have been changed mm-hmm. a little bit. And it's those compounds that then enter our circulation. And a particular compound in mushrooms that's been manipulated by bacteria protects the brain from hmm. damage. From Alzheimer's from or Alzheimer's dementia correct. or anything like that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So mushrooms. Mushrooms. Eat your mushrooms. Every week. Every week. Or, what if there's a diverse of mushrooms or if you eat the same mushroom all the time, does it matter? It really doesn't matter. It really wow. doesn't matter. And again, the plain old humble button mushroom will do it for you. Just have a now, couple you know, cups a week. What I do is, you know, I take a bunch of different mushroom blends yeah. and mix it up. Yeah, mix yeah. it up. You know, yeah. nations of mushrooms. Yeah. yeah, and I take mushroom capsules and I take, a, I have a product that's actually lots of different mushrooms. Wow. You just squeeze in your coffee or wow. whatever. There you go. Yeah. Okay. I have a question now. So for people that want to live longer uh, and be healthy while they live longer, not having to get surgeries all the time. Right. If you had three to five minutes max to talk to someone who said, I just want to live longer. I want to know the secrets to living longer. I got to figure out the keys and you've got three minutes with them. What would you say in three minutes are the things they must do? every day or as often as they can for the rest of their life to extend their life. The first thing they must do is realize that the only purpose of food is to get olive oil into your mouth. The only purpose of food and preferably it'll be mushrooms that you pour the the olive oil on. Mm. That's number one. Uh, The evidence that the polyphenols in olive oil, if you really, you know, wanted to live well uh, for a very long time, olive oil is the key. Two of the blue zones, actually three, if you count the acciarolis, use a liter of olive oil per week. Now, that's a lot of olive oil. Uh, it's sort of like 10 to 12 tablespoons a day. So there's a beautiful study out of Spain that I talk about where you took 65-year-old people. And we'll dumb it down real quick. Two groups. One group had to use a liter of olive oil per week for five years. Then they changed their olive oil once a week at the clinic. The other group had to eat a low-fat Mediterranean diet, Mm -hmm. most Mediterranean diets of Spain. At the end of five years, the olive oil group had better memory, had improved memory than when they started. The low-fat group lost memory. The women in the olive oil group had a 67% less incidence of breast cancer than the low-fat group. People in both groups who had coronary artery disease, the group that got the olive oil had a 30% less incidence of new events versus the group that had the low-fat diet. Hmm. And so if, you know, three blue zones and this study doesn't convince you that you better get olive oil into you, olive oil... grows brain cells and it's not the oil wow. per se it's actually the polyphenols in olive oil olive oil the polyphenols literally make your blood vessels slippery and i've actually published data on this that your blood vessels you cannot stick cholesterol to blood vessels if you have olive oil in your system huh. yeah so you know drink the dumb stuff do you drink it? it yeah i do wow yeah, i take a shot of it. <laughs> craig's always talking about yeah. How he can drink as much as possible. But yeah. what I would urge people to do is, so you can cook an olive oil. This myth that olive oil oxidizes when you cook it is is one of the worst internet myths there is. Really? It turns out that olive oil is the least oxidizable oil. It's even better than avocado oil or coconut oil. It does not oxidize. Oxidize meaning like evaporate. No, I, I oxidize mean, mean gets damaged. Damaged, damaged. got damaged. it, okay. okay. It turns out everybody sees olive oil smoking and they figure that's damaged. Mm-hmm. It's, not. it's not. So you can burn it as much as you want. You know, cultures, have been, cultures have been using olive oil to cook with for 5,000 yeah, years. Yeah. And, you know, there's not a lot of dead Italians from cooking in <laughs> olive oil. Okay. So okay. you got to get so olive oil. So that's number one. Number one. Number two, you got to take vitamin D3. You got to vitamin D three, not D. Not, yeah. Well, there's there's D two, there's okay. D one. What's vitamin D three and why is it important? So D three is the active form of vitamin D that we use. You will be shocked that people who have the highest levels of vitamin D in their bloodstream live the longest 
and live well really? compared to people with the lowest levels of vitamin D3. It turns out that you have to have vitamin D3 to activate stem cells activation. And we can... <laughs> vitamin D is also through the sun, is that correct, correct? But it's nearly impossible to get enough vitamin D through the sun. <laughs> really? Nearly impossible. 80% of Southern Californians are vitamin D deficient because we're slathering sunscreen on us and we're wearing long sleeve uh -huh. shirts. We're to inside protect a lot us. still. We're inside yeah. a lot, you know... Uh, I live in Palm Springs. It's pretty hot in the summer. Really hot tend not to go out a lot in the summer. So we don't have enough vitamin D. And so you have to swallow vitamin D. The University of California, San Diego, huh. published a study that the average human being to have an adequate level of vitamin D3 should be taking 9,600 international units a day. So basically 10,000 international units. Wow. They found no one who had vitamin D toxicity at 40,000 international units a day. You can't overdose on vitamin D. I have yet to see vitamin D toxicity. And I've been measuring vitamin D levels for 20 years wow. in patients every three months. I personally run my vitamin D level greater than 120 nanograms per milliliter for the last 12 years to prove I'm not dead. <laughs> and okay. so far, so good. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. And... Here's, you know, just you wow. know, to tell you how crazy this is. If I feel I'm getting something, if I'm coming down with a scratchy throat or something, I'll take 150,000 international units of vitamin D3. How many capsules is three that? Three days. Well, so you can get 5,000, right? So okay. that's 10 <laughs> capsules three times a day for three days. So I'm basically taking a half a million international units of vitamin D to ward off a virus. Everyone always says you should take vitamin C when you start to feel like a scratchy yeah, throat. It really doesn't work. Vitamin D is probably <laughs> one of the best antivirals that's ever been discovered. So vitamin C really doesn't help that much? It really doesn't help that much. You, I, you I'll take a, we can get into vitamin C, and I think wow. everybody should take a time-release vitamin C twice a day, and it's actually for a different purpose. What's the purpose? All right. The quick version. All right. Quick version. So you and I are one of the few animals that don't manufacture our own vitamin C. Uh, mm. Us, monkeys, and guinea pigs. And we have actually all the genes to manufacture vitamin C. There's actually five of them. The last gene is turned off. It's called a ghost gene. Well, why do we do that? Well, we manufacture vitamin C from sugar, from glucose. Mm -hmm. And it's actually very expensive to manufacture vitamin C. So the theory is, and I like the theory, is we grew up uh, in Africa with lots of vitamin C containing plants in our diet. And so it was unnecessary for us to manufacture vitamin C. And the theory goes, we'd have some extra glucose left over that we could store as fat mm. to make it through the winter when times are rough and we're the only fat storing ape. So the problem is vitamin C is essential to repair collagen and everybody collagen. Okay. The reason smokers get wrinkles is mm. collagen is broken because you actually repair cracks in collagen with vitamin C and smokers use up all their vitamin C with uh, what's called oxidative stress. So they don't have any vitamin C. In fact, here's another controversial statement. If I've got a smoker with heart disease, uh -huh. I'm willing to trade him his smoking with him taking large amounts of vitamin C while I get the rest of his diet squared away rather than tell him to stop smoking. Wow. Now, the reason I say that is, and I talk about this in the book, there's this fascinating island people called the Katavans in New Guinea who smoke like fiends. They eat 60% of their diet is taro root. The other part of their diet is coconut oil. Mm. And they live into their mid-90s with no medical care, but they've been studied ex extensively. There has never been a case of a heart attack, heart disease, or a stroke in these smokers. What they do do is they eat a lot of vitamin C-containing fruits and vegetables as mm. part of their diet. Olive oil as well? They don't have any olive oil. They have coconut oil. That's their coconut oil. Yeah, they don't have really? any olives down there. So you can do without olive oil and still live a long life? Yeah. But, but you think olive oil will... Well, yeah, since olive oil is so readily available, you might, might as well. Might as well. 
Okay, uh, so okay, anyhow, so, back to vitamin C. Yeah. You have to have vitamin C to repair the cracks in blood vessels. Uh, people remember scurvy, where people would die, they bleed to death on long ocean voyages. Mm. Actually, 50% mortality on those old ocean voyages, just dying from scurvy. And the British Navy, the reason they're called limeys is because the surgeon in the British Navy realized that if he gave them limes to take on the voyage, that they wouldn't die of mm. scurvy. And that's why the British Navy is still called limeys. Wow. So vitamin C repairs the cracks in collagen, and our blood vessels are flexing all the time. And so these cracks have to be repaired, and if they're not repaired, you basically bleed to death. We have a system of repairing those cracks, and it's called cholesterol, and cholesterol will patch those cracks. Interesting. So if you have plenty of vitamin C throughout the day, you won't, you'll be able to repair those cracks. And there's a wild study, I mean, head down a rabbit hole. You can genetically engineer rats to lack that final gene to make vitamin C. And they will live half as long wow. as a normal rat. If you then put vitamin C in their water, they will live as long as a normal rat who can manufacture their vitamin C. But they're drinking the water throughout the day. Yeah. So vitamin C, unfortunately, we have to manufacture. We have to manufacture it, and yeah. we've got some interesting tricks to do that uh, coming up. Okay. But in the meantime, the average person should take like a thousand milligrams of timed release vitamin C twice a day. Okay. To cover their ass. Wow. Okay. okay. So the first thing I heard you say, this three minutes is turning into twenty. It's <laughs> okay. No worries. <laughs> the first thing I heard is olive oil. Oh, and olive oil is actually one of the tricks to activate the ghost gene. A polyphenol in olive oil. Okay. You will actually make vitamin C. <laughs> okay, there you go. So there you go. Another good reason. So have olive oil, yeah. vitamin D, have lots of vitamin D. Three. D three. D three. And then what's next to okay. live a long life? Next is you got to get some form of long chain omega-3 fat, be better known as fish oil. Mm. And vegans have no excuse anymore. There is algae-based DHA and EPA. But here's the deal. Your brain uh, is about 70% fat. So if you want to call me a fathead, you know, I, I will You'll take it. you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I can just see now the internet uh, lighting up. <laughs> Country is a fan. <laughs> fathead. So half of the fat in your brain is actually an omega-3 fat called DHA. So half, basically half of your brain mm -hmm. is fish oil. Wow. And as I talk about in the longevity paradox, you look at people what are called the omega-3 index, which basically looks at how much DHA you have in you over the past two months. People with the highest omega-3 index have the largest brains and the largest areas of memory, the hippocampus. People with the lowest levels of DHA have the most shrunken brains and the smallest memory areas, hippocampus. Mm. So mom was right. When she said fish is brain food, you know, she was absolutely, she didn't know why it was, but we now know it's DHA is really what makes your brain. So sushi is good. Sushi is actually not a good idea. Oh, wow. Most of the people I see with high mercury levels are sushi eaters or dentists. Uh, so, and particularly huh. sashimi grade tuna. God, it's you so good, You just want to, just kind of so want to stay away from it. Oh, sugar Sorry. fish is amazing, though. Yeah. And, tono, and you know. it's got the grains, too. Yeah, when it's got the fit. grains, you know, so... So no sushi. Yeah. So just, once in a while. Yeah, once in a while. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. So fish oil is incredibly important. Yeah. And what I try to get people to do, and again, I measure this every three months in all my patients, and we're talking you know thousands and thousands of patients over the last twenty years. You want to get about a thousand milligrams of DHA per day. Now, how do you do that? Well, you get fish oil. I mean, you can go to Costco. I don't right, care. right, right. And you look on the back and you find serving size and make sure it says one serving size. Uh -huh. They love to fool you. Uh, they may say two or three. Uh -huh. And then you look down below and you see DHA and you look to see how much DHA is in a capsule. And you add it up and say, oh, OK, there's 250 milligrams of DHA in this capsule. So I need to take four. Wow. Four a day. Yeah. Or well, a thousand I mean, a day. However, a thousand a day. Yeah. yeah. A thousand a day. Okay. DHA. 
we got olive oil. We've got uh, vitamin D3. We have fish oils. What else do we need to live longer? So you got to have polyphenols in your diet. So poly- <laughs> what the heck is a polyphenol? <laughs> How do you remember polyphenol? Think, think about polyphenol. Okay. Um, phenols are plant compounds. Polyphenols are plant compounds that plants use primarily to protect themselves uh. against stress and sunlight. Uh-huh. Uh, just interesting fact. We know that red wine is beneficial for you because of actually two polyphenols. The most famous is resveratrol. The other one is quercetin or quercetin. The higher the grapes are grown, the higher in altitude the grapes are grown, the more polyphenols they make. Because they need more to protect themselves. Yeah, right? Exactly. It's basically uh, suntan. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they, they've actually protected themselves against sunburn. Interesting. Also, the more the plant is stressed, the more polyphenols it makes to protect itself. Right. Okay. So polyphenols are traditionally in dark colored berries. So for instance, blueberries, blackberries, raspberries. Interesting fun fact, the leaves of these trees or vines have more polyphenols than the actual fruit does. Hmm. So, for instance, black raspberry leaves have far more polyphenols than black raspberries. Um, And I take black raspberry capsules, oh, by the way, and it's in the book. There you go. Um, So... Olives, for instance, are loaded with polyphenols, huh. and olives that are stressed uh, produce even better. Are even better. Wow. Olive leaves have more polyphenols than olives, so olive leaf extract is an easy way of getting the huge amount of benefits without drinking a liter of olive oil. So, do you, what about like uh, you know leafy greens? Do yeah. you want stressed out looking leafy greens, or do you want healthy, thriving Excellent looking? Excellent question. It turns out that the reason organic vegetables in general are better for you, besides the fact that they haven't been sprayed with pesticides mm-hmm. and herbicides and probably Roundup, and we can get into that, is the fact that these creatures these plants actually have to work harder huh. and they have to produce more polyphenols to protect themselves against insect predation and so that's actually the reason you want to eat organic so when you're going to the farmer's market and the poor little organic vegetables have got pockles of, of insects <laughs> it's like and, they're dying and yeah. they don't look very good you go i want that guy really? that guy is struggling he is going to just be so loaded with polyphenol really and correlation with that is <laughs> the more bitter the better because polyphenols in general yeah. are very bitter uh, for instance when uh, we were developing you know my signature product vital reds it's pure polyphenols primarily mm. and they're bitter so we did lots of taste testing to figure out how the heck we're going to mask these mm. really bitter compounds so more bitter more better in fact, as I talk about it in the book, I, I had the pleasure of knowing Jack LaLanne, uh-huh. uh, who, who you would know is really the godfather of, yeah. of fitness and nutrition in the United States. And I knew him in his later years. Um, and Jack used to have a saying is that if it tastes good, spit it out. Interesting. Now, what he really meant by that is bitter things, nasty tasting things is actually what is going to give the bugs that are actually going to keep you alive what they want to eat. And don't, you know, more bitter, more better. Mm. So, you know, the more polyphenols, the more bitter greens I can get into you, the The better. better. Interesting. But you can get that through capsules and other things too. Yeah, you can. Uh, And in fact, that's one of the reasons I'm a nut about taking a bunch of supplements because we if you look at even you know, really good organic eaters most human beings only eat maybe 20 different plant species mm-hmm. um I, right. probably, I probably eat like three yeah you know. yeah most people do <laughs> like five maybe yeah like, you know and, and you know ketchup is not a vegetable <laughs> exactly. it's a tomato and we can't we, we can't, we do, can't that. do that so 
our an our ancestors and even looking at modern hunter gatherers like the Hansa tribe they go through they eat 250 different plant species on a rotating mm. basis and you think about it all those plants are grown organically uh, they're in six feet of loam soil they got their cool microbiome so they're just replete with all these nutrients and polyphenols and so you know if people think that they can actually do a great job eating healthy uh, without supplementation, uh, I got oceanfront property in Palm Springs. I'm happy to sell them. Right, right, exactly. Hey, there is no <laughs> right, exactly. Okay, so I want to get one more thing. I've heard that in order to extend your life, you need to. I can't remember the name. Extend something at the end of your telomeres. Telomeres. Yeah. What is or that? Telomeres. Telomeres. Way. So how do we? Ex is that true? Do you have to extend okay. this? Okay. So that is one theory of longevity yeah. and that it is a it's a good theory i like the theory uh -huh. it's controversial um vitamin d turns out that people with the highest levels of vitamin d have the longest telomeres there you go so why wouldn't you do that right if you like that theory mm -hmm. there you go so that's vitamin d is vitamin d it's if that's anybody is if anybody takes away it's vitamin d so you've given four things so far Let's give me one final thing that can extend our life and the, the quality of our life as well. Great. So the last thing we want to do is we want to turn off as much as we can the sensor called mTOR. Uh, originally called the mammalian target of rapamycin. Uh, it's subsequently been discovered in all organisms besides mm. mammals. And so now it's called the mechanistic target of rapamycin. And so mTOR is an energy sensor, and it's in all of our cells. And basically, we come from a circadian rhythm mm -hmm. system of plentiful food at one time of the year and very little food at right. another time of year. Right. Fruit sometimes, not the Exactly. Time, yeah. <laughs> and we use fruit to gain weight for the winter, and that's a whole other subject. So mTOR senses energy availability, and it senses sugar molecules, and it also senses amino acids, protein. Now, it turns out that it's very sensitive to particular amino acids mm -hmm. rather than all amino acids. The ones it's most sensitive to are amino acids contained in animal protein. And animals include fish, animal protein includes eggs, it includes cheeses, and besides, you know, meat. So beautiful work that's been done, a lot of it done by now my friend, Walter Longo from USC, from the Longevity mm. Center. Is that the mimicking yeah, fasting the, the diet? Yeah, the fasting mimicking diet. Fasting. I've taken that a couple yeah, of times. And I, yeah, and that he got a patent for yeah. Prolong. Yeah, Prolong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He got a patent for it. So I Prolong, this. yeah. It's so good. Prolong is a vegan, low amino acid diet that you do for five days yeah it's tough the first time it is for me it was. now in the book i wrote about it in the plant paradox actually before he made promo but i write about it again and he and i and he's even given me a nice shout out on the back um uh, if you the idea is you want to reduce mTOR as much as you can and the longer the more you suppress it the longer you live and here's the reason mm -hmm. you if times are rough and you sense that times are rough, your body, your immune system, actually goes around and looks at all the cells in your body and says, who's pulling their weight? Who is really you know, contributing to this effort? And who's a slacker? Who looks a little weird? Who's not, you know, not doing? And it actually instructs cells to commit suicide. And it's called autophagy. And it tells cells, sorry, you know, you're not, die. You're, out, you're out of here, yeah. you die. Um, and so it gets the fittest of the fittest mm -hmm. to survive. It makes you stronger. And you have to have these periods of time. You have to call the herd, as we say. So unless you do that, you have all of these cells that just kind of build up the debris. They're called senescent cells. Mm -hmm. Some people call them zombie cells. And it's the amount of these zombie cells that is actually going to make you deteriorate long before you should. And get so, sick and everything yeah, else. Exactly. Yeah. So you got to call the hurt. So how you do that? Five days in a row, once a month, 
Once you, a month you do this? Once a month. Five days wow. in a row. Five days in a row. You follow uh, a, ve- a vegan diet mm-hmm. of about 900 calories. Mm-hmm. And I've got some great recipes. It's easy to do. And you do it five days in a row. Yep. It's as if you did calorie restriction every day. And what this does is not only call the herd, but it activates stem cells. Now, everybody says, oh, stem cells, you know, it's the future. You've got oodles of stem cells in you already. Mm -hmm. Where do you think we get the stem cells? We, you know, take a liposuction and suck out your fat, and then we spin it around, and we get your stem cells and inject you right back in. They're already there. You just have to call them into action. So when someone does that, when they pull it out of you, yeah. they're, they're essentially just killing off the dead cells and then putting the good ones back in. No, there. they're actually, you know, they're centrifuging out the stem cells. Stem cells gotcha. are in fat. Uh-huh. They're everywhere, okay. actually. So you, but you got to activate the great mm-hmm. crazy thing. So you activate them by this modified fast or you uh, do intermittent fasting mm-hmm. or time-restricted fasting. Uh, for instance, for the last 12 years, during the winter from January through June, Monday through Friday, I don't eat breakfast, I don't eat lunch, and I eat all my calories in a two-hour window from 6 to 8 o'clock at night. So wow. 22 out of 24 hours, I'm fasting. For how long? For six months. Six months you do that? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Now, why do you do that? Because way back when. Are you just drinking olive oil and vitamin D all day? No. During the night. <laughs> during night, that those evening. two hours, yeah, yeah, yeah just yeah, drinking it? Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. But that's why you look so young. I don't know.